The city of Newton is actually a collection of small villages, 13 in all, from Chestnut Hill to Newtonville to Wobbin. Each community boasts its own characteristics. The village of Auburndale is no exception. Auburndale is a hidden gem. On the banks of the Charles River, Auburndale was once mostly farmland. By the mid-1800s, the growth of the railroad transformed this sleepy hamlet into a bustling place to live and play. There were 5,000 boats docked in boathouses up and down the banks here, which is pretty amazing. By 1897, the village had become a destination for thrill-seekers and fun-loving visitors, says Clara Silverstein, Historic Newton's Community Engagement Manager and co-author of the book, Nuremberg Park and Totem Pole Ballroom. Behind us used to be Nuremberg Park, which was a big amusement park that opened in 1897, and it lasted until the early 1960s. They had vaudeville shows a couple times a day, they had live bands, and they also had a large zoo, which around the turn of the century was a fairly new concept. Silverstein says by the 1930s, the park had evolved into a fancier, more sophisticated venue. Nobody wanted to see the vaudeville anymore, and it was the Great Depression, so they decided to turn the stage into the totem pole ballroom and have big bands there. And they had some really top name entertainers, but you could not have any alcohol here. Even Bing Crosby was thrown out of the park because his brother was performing and Bing was seen sipping from a flask. So out he went, no exceptions. Strict rules weren't just limited to the ballroom. The boathouse was once home to the Metropolitan Police who enforced strict river-related rules. They didn't want people pulling into secluded spots and kissing each other. So they outlawed people lying down in canoes and people kissing from about 1903 until 1906. Kissing was outlawed. While over time the rules were relaxed a bit, by the 1960s, interest in the park had faded. People's idea of what to do for fun changed. They didn't really want to go ballroom dancing. Rock and roll was coming along, folk music. One of the last performers here was Peter, Paul, and Mary. There was so much traffic, it shut down Route 128 at the time. The gates of the park closed for good on Labor Day, 1963. The property is now home to a Marriott Hotel, but for some, the area still sparks nostalgic memories of the not-so-distant past. They remember going to the proms from Newton High School there. They remember going on first dates. Another Auburndale landmark could have been a popular date spot in the Norumbega Park days. The Knotty Pine dates back to the 1930s. The Cordes family has owned the luncheonette for nearly 40 years. Meet Mama Tula. People come here and they stay like three hours sometimes. They go home and they come back for coffee. <laughs> Tula's sons, Nick and Billy, say Customers bond over everything from the weather to politics here, but sports pretty much dominates the conversation. Definitely a sports diner, and we did it by accident, to tell you the truth. We came in, we definitely were sports people. We liked watching sports back in the day with the Larry Bird era and all that nonsense. And we just started just yelling back and forth, you know, he stinks, he's good, he's terrible, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, the started, whole place is involved, but it brings people together. Absolutely. It's a common language, right? right? And, Especially in Boston. And absolutely. And our, family, right? and our family style, that just being so close, yeah. has become more of a family diner, too. So, like, 90% of our customers are regulars. The regulars stop in for breakfast staples, including pancakes or the bacon and egg cheese sandwich with home fries. The turkey club with crinkle fries is the best seller at lunchtime. We right? try to keep it old school, though. The brothers attempted to change or expand the popular breakfast and lunch joint, but they know better than to tinker with the Naughty Pine charm. That's the original countertop, and you can see where the elbows go, it's kind of worn, worn. So like we match these here. tables to the original countertop. Not far from Naughty Pine, another Auburndale mainstay has cafe in the name, but flowers are the only item on the menu. Owner Ken Leary says, Keeping Ken's Flower Cafe small helps him keep costs down. Long stem roses are under $20 a dozen here and a popular impulse buy. A lot of people have purposely stopped in to say, I've seen you here, I live down the street, I've never noticed you before until Starbucks was here. Now I'm getting my coffee, I'm gonna purchase flowers. Leary began selling flowers in Auburndale from his Volkswagen Bug back in the 70s. And I just grew from there. 
I always wanted to put some type of building here, but the zoning won't allow it. So I have a custom made trailer. Ken's Flower Cafe is open every day, except January 1st. Yeah, mix it up. Mix it up. Leary says he loves his job most because he's selling happiness. 99.9% .9 of the customers are happy. They're here because they Next want night. to be. They're not here because they have to be. Back to Auburndale Zoo. Claire says it wasn't unusual for some of the animals to escape and wander down the road. An old joke at the nearby hospital was that there were so many monkey bites, there should have been an official triage area. The area is significantly less wild these days. Coming up, can you repeat that?